I'm here today with Rosie Williams, author of a newly published book called Repurposed Faith. Rosie, tell me a little bit about uh, how the book got started. Where'd the in inspiration come from? Well, the inspiration, just in general to write, came really way, way, way back when I was a little kid because my parents owned the Christian bookstore in town and they would drag me around to Christian booksellers conventions and author signings and but anyway the idea there was born to write but then fast forwarding the last few years it seemed like I kept hearing over and over again from friends from uh, people that I would talk to about their struggles with taking time for their quiet time. As you toyed with the idea of writing a book and, and having to do something with with quiet time, when when or how did you know that it was your mission to write a book? That's an interesting question because if you were to go to like a professional training on that, they would say, whatever you do, if you're talking to a publisher, don't say, God told me to write this book. Mm -hmm. But one night I, I woke up from a dead sleep and I had this thought in my head, jumpstart your quiet time. And, and I couldn't go back to sleep. So I got up and went to my office and I, I, be, I began to pray and ask the Lord if that was something he was trying to plant in my heart and in my mind. So I opened up my computer and I asked the Lord if he would indeed show me an outline of what that would look like. And very quickly, I the words came out, the chapter titles came out, and after that was over, I closed it up and went back to sleep. All right, so you, now you're tasked with sitting down and writing. How'd you go about doing that? Well, to my surprise, the, the publisher told me that oftentimes writers will write the last chapter first or the middle chapter first and so I uh, thought okay which of these chapter titles am I the most confident about the material and, the, and the, the title and I knew that a lot of people just didn't like to journal so I decided to title that chapter please don't make me journal. Good title. That would be something, uh, that title would appeal to me, that's for sure. <laughs> and where does that chapter appear in the book? Is that in the middle or the end, beginning? It's, it's kind of uh, toward the, the middle of the book. Okay, so you started in the middle. Yes, I did. With something that was near and dear to you and right. went from there. Right. The book kind of had a life of its own. As, as a matter of fact, some of the chapters were, I was switching them around in order, trying to get it to flow in an orderly way. Well, let me ask you a, a question about influencers. Um, either who or what would you say was an influencer on the book and its content? Starting with my own family, my husband is a tremendous uh, influencer. He's a, he has got repurposing his blood because he's right now repurposing an old army jeep. So he influenced me a lot, especially on those days where I would get stuck or get writer's block, I would have to go talk to him about, oh no, I'm stuck, and he would say, well, what are you writing about? And then he would give me stories or ideas, and then I would get to go in again. So it was also the publishing company and the, the, uh, the staff that they had there that were so willing to help me along the way, one step at a time, knowing that this was the first time for me. My suspicion is over the course of weeks and months, there had to be some high points and probably some low points. Can you pick out maybe one of each and, and tell us a little bit about that? I can't think of any higher point than the day that I listened to this cassette tape. It, w it was a tape that my dad, Andy Anderson, had made 33 years ago. He um, had, had made a tape prior to his death and my brother and my sister had listened to the tape after his death, but I could never bring myself to do it because I was so close to my dad and it was just so emotional. The day that I was writing about drawing close to God as a Heavenly Father, I did listen to that tape and in that tape, one of the verses that he mentioned was out of 2 Corinthians 3, 2. It was a verse that, that talked about people being like a letter that are written on our hearts 
and not on tablets of stone. And when he said that, I just started to cry because I realized that that verse is what is on my website today. And I don't remember him ever talking particularly to me about that verse. I felt like that God was directing my writing that day as I began to write to people about what my dad would have wanted them to know about the Lord. Uh, so that was my high point. The um, low point, I think, was just trying to find the balance with my family. For example, I might be writing and hear a little pitter-patter of footsteps and my grandkids were showing up mm -hmm. and I had to shut that part of my brain off and close it up and go into grandma mode. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I think that being able to, to go back and forth between uh, the creative, quiet moments that you need when you're writing to just general life when it, it called to you and you needed to, to move to a different place. I want to ask you, is there something you're particularly proud of? Not in an arrogant way, but in an uh, achievement, accomplishment kind of way. Well, I think uh, just finishing the book <laughs> pressing send <laughs> sure. to the publisher because I, I I have a problem with finishing things. It wasn't just a, something that happened over four months. What I was writing about happened over a lifetime. And to be able to take the struggles that I had, because I had a lot of struggles in each one of those chapter areas. And so be, to be able to take the lessons that I'd learned and put them into some kind of a format that hopefully will be helpful to someone else, that, that felt really good. You've talked about God through this whole process, His faithfulness throughout. What do you remember maybe are the moments where you saw God working? Well, I think first of all, those times where I'd be sitting in front of a blank screen and with notes, papers, three by five cards, just almost really, if you could imagine being buried and all that, and, and to just pray through that. So I saw God just directing me through, through the writing process. Uh, I also saw his hand as I began to visit with other people that I would meet, just strangers on the street that might ask me about what I did, or and if they found out I wrote a book, they would want to know more about it. And all I would sometimes need to do is tell them the title was about repurposed faith. And they began to open up their heart and to began to share. And uh, so I, I, I have begun to see how this process is an opportunity for, for people to question me and ask me why I believe what I do and to be able then to direct them back to uh, Christ and to the Word. So that's been awesome. I think it affirms that what you were asked to do, God will use and bless. Thanks for our time together today. Thank you, Jerry.